in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching for we wrestle not against flesh and blood Another word is the fight is not between your uncle and auntie, your brother and your sister, your boss or your employee or your colleague, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, this aeon, this system, against spiritual wickedness in high or heavenly places. Hallelujah. Now, I told us that this is a... This is a course and I read out the curriculum. Uh, let's look at it quickly. I told us we're going to consider just five areas. Spiritual warfare is a very broad, very broad subject. Hallelujah. Uh, some have taught it emotionally based on their personal experiences. Others have taught it religiously. Others have taught it culturally. But we must approach it from a biblical standpoint. Hallelujah. And so, I believe that there are five areas that if we touch is sufficient to guide us. One, we consider the reality of the spirit world. How that all that we see is not all that there is. Hallelujah. You can get that in part one. The reality of the spirit world. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. That means there are other heavens. There are other planes. Remember our teaching, the reality of heaven and hell. Please get it. It follows in sequence. In it, I showed you that many people, where they went to is not heaven. They went to astral realms. They went to a lot of planes in the spirit and came back with seeming revelations. Hallelujah. Because their revelations are not consistent with the universal character of the word. Remember that you test prophecy by comparing it to the universal character. That means even if you don't find a specific scripture, you can compare the character of the Bible in general as against that prophecy. And if it does not match, dump it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two, we consider the mystery of wickedness. The concept of Satan, demons. I, I took us back and I told us, uh, we began to examine what is Satan really looking for? Why is he putting cancer on people? Why, why diseases? Why infirmity? What is he really looking for? Praise God. Hallelujah. Why will Satan anoint a lady to destroy the life of great people? Is he really interested in women? Why will Satan, uh, the devil, make somebody run after money or run after power? What does he really want? Because see, many people have been binding and casting without a revelation of what Satan is really seeking after. And to understand this, you must go back to the pre-Adamite dispensation. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, it said when he was cast down, there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Remember our teaching? That great dragon, even Satan, he has been casted down and he has come with great anger and fury. And I told us that one of the clearest signs that someone is being influenced by demons is what? Anger, rage, uncontrolled anger. Praise the Lord. There is nothing like we are like that in our family. It means all the family members need help. Are you getting the point? Please take this very seriously. We are not playing. This is helping us to understand. So we consider that the mystery of wickedness. Why, why wickedness? Why will the devil just make an arm robber look at a little girl and just blow her head with gun? Is it... Did, is the devil going to eat her? What, I mean, what is the whole idea? The Bible says the whole world lieth where? Not in kindness. So don't let all those 
those messages that deceive people and make them look like we live in a very friendly world. Don't trouble me. I won't trouble you. Whether you trouble Satan or not, he's determined to trouble you. And there is a reason. The reason is older than you. You must find out. Otherwise, you will just be suffering something you inherited. The anger of the devil backdates before Adam. So find out what the true story is. And the Bible lets us know that there are certain stories that have not been revealed to men yet. He calls Satan that old serpent. He's not young. That old serpent. That means there was a story. The Bible says he was a murderer. Who did he kill? Where was the archive of that story? Where was it hidden in? I told you already that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 are a long years apart. Are you getting that? So the Bible says in the beginning, what beginning? That mysterious beginning that only God can tell. Because even the angels were created. I told you that their material of creation was what? Light. The lightning that strikes when thunder comes. That was the material of their creation. That's why they can translate themselves as angels of light. Are you getting that now? So there was a long story that happened before Adam came. That was why immediately Adam came. The Bible says he told him, be fruitful, multiply. That's the part a lot of people like. We like fruitfulness, but the Bible says subdue. That means there was a hidden story. What will you subdue? How can God just bring man and say subdue? Hallelujah. Chronologically speaking, the Bible was not arranged accurately. Are you getting my point? Chronology means according to the occurrence of events. Because sandwiched between the beginning and the end of Genesis should be the book of Job. Are you getting that now? So Job began to speak and talk about a lot of things that happened. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14 tells us, you, you don't need to write it, you can all get it in part one. I'm just doing a quick review. We're examining the mystery of wickedness. The Bible tells us that there was this angel. I told us the strata of the angelic, if you can remember, that I don't know if it was in this series or another teaching. If you remember, I told you that before the creation of man, the angels just below God himself, God meaning the Trinity, all right? The Trinity means what? Almighty God, not the Father. He never became Father until Jesus became Son. Are you getting my point? Hmm. So, the Almighty God, Eloha in Greek, one of the Trinity, the Godhead, and then the Word and the Spirit. That's their original name. Are you getting me? Adam never knew God as Father. Did he ever call him Father? Never. Are you getting my point? So, we must seek to have this understanding. Because I told you that if you do not have understanding, the devil will cheat you badly in this line. The purpose of revelation is to demystify Satan and make you see that he is a person who can be tamed. Job was one man who tamed Satan until he gave a testimony before God that he could not do anything about his life. So a possibility exists that through revelation you can build a fortification around your life that will keep Satan absolutely powerless. And this is our goal with this teaching. Are you getting the point now? Praise God. So the mystery of wickedness. I explained to us how that Satan, look at me please. Do you know why Satan was called the most valued cherub that covered it? Let me explain to you. According to the angelic strata, after the seraphims, we have the cherubs. Are you following me now? And the cherubs were the closest to God. And I told you that there is a law in the spirit that when you see God, you are changed automatically. It has been a law that existed. Every time you behold God, you must change state. This is why Satan became more excellent than other angels. Because he ministered at the presence of God. Are you getting the point? This is why when Gabriel, who stands before God, appeared to Zechariah, when Zechariah doubted him, Gabriel made Zechariah dumb. He said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Will there be so much falsehood in me that the presence of God cannot detect that I'm bringing you a word and you doubt it, become dumb? So, there is, that's why the Bible says, as we behold him, we are what? There is a translation. Paul did not just create the law. 
Paul only revealed it to the body of Christ. It had been a spiritual law. Every time you behold God, you are changed. That's why, like Bishop said, if you are in church, a, a true church, and you are not changed, I don't care how hardened you are, something is wrong. Either with the man of God, or you, or both of you. You get the point? Because even the mountains that are harder than your heart, the Bible says they skip like lambs. So what is wrong with your own heart? That it has refused to change, not just keep, change. Hallelujah. The mystery of wickedness. Very, very important. So I told you about the great rebellion. I told you Satan did not do his rebellion alone. No man plots a coup alone. There were many other spirits that followed him. Leviathan, Apollyon. All of these spirits together with a third of the angels. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelations. And when they fell, what happened? They fell and um, there was... That it was that judgment from that war that led to the darkness and the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. You get it now? So now the earth was dark, void, formless. Why? On account of the judgment that had happened. And then in Genesis 1 verse 3, Elohim now says, let us, he said, let there be light. I told you that light was not sunlight. Sunlight was created a few verses later. That light was the quality of himself that enables creation. In him was light and that light was the light of men. See it? John 1. And you read downwards. Okay? There is no creation without light. So before God does any creation, he must have light. There are many believers without light who are trying to talk it into creation. It is the abundance. When there is no light, there is no creation. So when you say, be healed, be healed, uh uh-uh, what is the light that sponsors that prophetic word? We already explained that, right? Remember our teaching on standing on the rock. Jesus, I mean, Peter got a revelation that Jesus was trying to communicate. He said, who do men say I am? And they say, they say you are Elias, some say you are this and that. And he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter, speaking by the Spirit, says, I know who thou art, thou art Christ. The son of the living God. What did he say? Flesh and blood. That means revelation is not in the realm of flesh and blood. You can't get it with intellect and philosophy. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father. He says, thou art Peter. And upon this revelation you have caught, there is a structure. I will build my church. That means I will build my church upon the revelation that to get victory, they must first have the revelation before the manifestation. That was a rock. The rock was a structure and a revelation. So two men built houses. The houses were built. But one built it upon a revelation, a rock. Another built it upon nothing, sand. When the winds came, what happened? The one that understood why his house should stand, stood. And the one that did not know, fell. So I told you that every time you say be healed, demons will first check in the realm of the spirit what rock you are standing on. What revelation sponsors your audacity? If there is a revelation, they will respond. This is why people can come and say, I bless you. And the person doesn't get blessed. There is no rock. The person is standing on philosophies. It's not about talking. What rock do you stand upon? You see why many people go and confront the devil and come back with casualties. There is no rock. You don't stand before Pharaoh until you have met the burning bush. That becomes a revelation. Are you following me now? So, Satan um, had a very tragic time. Part two, we'll continue there. And then number three, our course curriculum was still there. Hey, we have to run. Number three, realms and jurisdiction of satanic operation. Listen, Satan is not omnipresent. Say it, one to go. Number two, Satan is not omnipotent. Three, Satan is not omniscient. What that means is that Satan cannot be everywhere. Listen, Satan has an organized demonic structure governed by fear. Satan cannot be at the same place everywhere. Are you getting my point? So that philosophy that makes us believe Satan is in your house, your family, let me tell you the truth. Satan is not everywhere. He operates with an arsenal of demons structured, led by fear. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point now? 
Satan does not know all things. If Satan knew all things, let me tell you something. Look at me. Pharaoh was a wizard. Are you getting me? There were 10 spirits that were walking in Pharaoh. 10 spirits. Those were the spirits that each one of the plague was contending against. That's why after the 10th one, he had to let them go. Are you getting my point? There were 10. Pharaoh was a wizard. But with all his wizardry, Moses... The reason for the assassination of children were growing in his palace. Yet the demons could not detect it. Satan does not know all things. Are you getting me? Number three. Satan is not what? What? What does that mean now? Oh, that's the knowing all thing. What's the other part? Omnipotent. Satan does not have all ability. Jesus already told us without contradiction, all power. How many? How many? All power. All authority. The word exousia. All delegated power. Remember, we ended last week's session powerfully with the revelation of the name. Isn't it? So, all power has been delegated. Is the Greek word exousia. The power of authority, the capacity to function in the office of another. It has been given unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we touched on that. And then we, we ended last week's teaching with the weapons of victory. Exploring the spiritual arsenals that have been put at our disposal to maintain and enforce victory. Look at me. We, I did a small teaching, if you can remember, during the miracle service. And I told us why a lot of people, although this is what the word says, they may not see it in their lives. Because it's not just, how many of you have had that statement? Now, please don't be offended. How many of you have had that statement? God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Let me see your hands. Hmm. I wish it were true. But let me tell you straight to the point. Huh? I love you too much. No matter how you are looking at me, I'm going to say it. Praise the Lord. God said it. I believe it by understanding it. And I'm diligent enough to apply the principles that fulfill my part. And then God is committed to perform. That's the complete equation. Are you getting my point? Any Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for your salvation is an irresponsible Christianity. Let me explain what that means to you. Even what we call salvation that was freely done by Christ, you must respond and receive by your confession for it to become true. Is that true? Praise God. The book of Hebrews tells us very clearly that although God has put all things under the feet of man, he said we do not yet, that means experientially, we do not yet see all things under his feet. So it takes faith and the application of kingdom principles to make a present reality now. For instance, if somebody is on a wheelchair, listen, if somebody is on, just sit down. If somebody is on a wheelchair, does it stop the fact that the Bible says no inhabitant in Zion shall say I am sick? Does it stop that fact? But experientially, what is his position? Please help me. Are you getting my point? So this is the difference between faith and foolishness. Are you getting my point? This guy, it is true that the Bible says that, but experientially, we have not seen the confirmation of the word in his life. So it takes faith and the application of the relevant kingdom principles to make his life now come under that reality to prove that God does not lie. Are you getting my point? So if you get that, then you'll be able to understand this teaching very, very well. Uh, we touched on the name very powerfully and remember the example i i made let me use it again sam come i told you the first revelation of the name is what the name of any man brings his presence to the scene i called him and his presence showed up so when the bible says when we talk about the power of the name the name of jesus christ brings his presence and the bible tells us that the holy spirit was sent to answer every time the office of Jesus is invoked in the earth realm. He is the extension. Allos Paracletos. The one who will continue what Jesus was doing in the earth. Are you getting my point now? Remember that song? Thank you, oh my father. 
for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done. You see that? So the Holy Spirit helps us to finish what Jesus Christ started. Jesus is still walking in the earth. He is the head. He has the body. We are his hands, his feet, and so on and so forth. Okay? So we stopped at the name. I told you the name is not Jesus. Remember? That was a shocker for last week. The name is not Jesus. I told you in Bible days, they didn't know anything as Jesus. The name was Jesus. You see that? The Hebrew was Jehoshua. That was it. Our Savior. That's where you get the word Joshua. That's the Hebrew version of Jesus. In Mexico, there are many people. There are footballers called Jesus. There are all kinds of people. Comedians, nasty unbelievers called Jesus. So, it's not J-E-S-U-S. Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says God has given him a name, an identity, an office. The office is not Jesus. I told you the office is Lord. L-O-R-D. That's the name that was given to him. Until he was exalted, he was not Lord. Experientially. This is why as great as Jesus was in the earth realm, his power did not work everywhere. There were certain places he prohibited people. He said, don't go there. Even when he sent the 70, he said, just go only to the lordship of Israel because they were a covenant people. Remember when he healed the woman who was bound, he said, this woman being a daughter of Abraham, that means according to the Abrahamic blessing, indeed shall all the families be blessed. So through faithful Abraham, she qualifies. Although Jesus had not died, but she qualifies through the lineage of Abraham to be blessed. The Gentiles were not part of that blessing. Are you getting my point? So now when he resurrected, the Bible now tells us Christ has redeemed all of us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangs upon the tree, that's Galatians 3, that the blessings of Abraham was the blessing of Abraham, not cows, not goats. The blessings of Abraham is justification by faith that grants you access to receive what the Bible calls the blessing and that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, weapons of victory were supposed to continue from there. Um, but tonight, I want to just jump and move to the next topic, commanding victory. This is our last teaching service for the year. We we'll, we'll still deal, there are many, there's the power of the name, there is the power of the blood. Hallelujah. There is the power of unity, there is the power of praise. These are the spiritual arsenals that have been given. For us to maintain victory, we must explore them. I just want us to have something because next week is miracle service. And so we will not have time to do any long teaching. So commanding victory, spiritual laws and rules of engagement. We'll just touch on that next year by the grace of God. We'll have time to consider the blood. Because the revelation of the blood is very powerful. Remember our miracle service for October? Exodus 11 verse 1. Yet one plague will I bring upon Pharaoh. And upon the nation of Egypt. After that he will let you go. So nine plagues. Pharaoh refused to let them go. But there was a mystery plague. When it was released. Pharaoh let them go by force. Hallelujah. The power of the blood. We will explain about the blood. Because there is a law in the spirit. Whenever you kill a man. His blood is permitted to speak against you. It's a law. Are you getting my point? You see why our villages are full of curses. You know how many innocent people they killed and buried and did all kinds of things? And many of us just got up in the middle of history and we are just receiving whiplashes we cannot account for. Because you came from wherever. And other people say, just, just assume it's not there. It's there. Look at it in your life. It's there. People are not getting married. People are dying. So, no, I convinced myself it's not there. This thing is not working. Faith is not stupidity. Hallelujah. Hmm. So I'll tell you the mystery of the blood. Because blood in the realm of the spirit has a voice and it speaks in levels. That's why a herbalist can judge your case and say this kind of case, go and bring a goat. Can't be a chicken, no way. Go and bring a goat. You see that? Blood speaks. The blood of Abel spoke. 
That's not the only blood that has been speaking. I will show you when we talk about the mystery of the blood. How that, remember in the Bible, when Joshua had a covenant with certain people who lied to them. That they were from a far country. And he entered a covenant only to find out that they were deceived. The covenant was that they would not kill them. They would not touch any one of them. Is that true? Fast forward. Later on, the Bible tells us that Saul, the son of Kish, came and during his reign, they killed those people and the earth began to react. People started dying in Israel and God didn't do anything about it. They went to inquire of the Lord and the Lord said, "Uh, uh-uh, you have broken something, covenant. This covenant thing, people trivialize. I will explain it to you. Do you love me? Yes. Promise you will never leave me. I promise. Bring your hand. And you just cut it. You are putting it. Yeah, I can't. Because of love, I will just drink it. See, people do careless and very ridiculous things in the name of love, emotion, affection. Hmm. Even God did not do anything about it. Listen to me. Do you know when they went to inquire of God? You know what God told them? We'll study it. I'm just giving you a preview. God told his covenant people to go and meet their enemies to find out what the penalty will be. It's in your Bible. And they went and met them. Do you know what they said? They said, bring the seven sons of Saul that we may slay all of them. And God said, you had them. People kept dying. Is it not in your Bible? Saul had to carry his seven children. They slew them one by one by one. When they slew the seventh one, everything stopped. You live in a world that is governed by principles. The Bible says it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why you can fast and pray over certain things. And the day you are rounding up the fasting, Satan comes to mock you on that thing again. Somebody has been pressing you. You say, I will engage. You prayed for 21 days. On the 21st day, you have said, thank you, Jesus. You fell asleep. They came again. And bastardize your 21 days of suffering. Because he said, I will give you keys, not a key. Keys, 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 principles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, so let's, let's get to our teaching for tonight. Commanding victory. Let me do a quick review of something I explained the last time. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Mama, come, Sam, come, or any of it. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. One here, one here. I told us that there are two dimensions to understanding the kingdom. The first dimension is what? The person of Jesus. Everybody say the person of Jesus. Now, understanding the person of Jesus is what brings you into intimacy. You understand his nature. You understand his character. Are you getting my point? The second dimension is understanding the principles of the kingdom say after me the principles of the kingdom this is what is responsible for establishing your victory and keeping satan where he belongs so that you have a personal relationship with jesus christ does not mean things will work for you automatically please are you getting what i'm saying the bible says i will give you the keys of the kingdom we'll go there shortly it says when you have those keys You will bind and cast. The bind and casting is not necessarily saying I bind or I cast. Uh -uh. There is something you do that equates binding. There is something you do that equates casting. Are you getting my point? Remember Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says it shall come to pass in that day. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I commanded this day. He says, you shall be exalted on high above all nations and these blessings shall come, follow you and overtake you. And then he begins to list them. Do and observe. Do, not think, not wish, not be emotional. Do and observe. Many believers, listen to me, many believers have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's true. They've given their hearts to the Lord. Are you following me now? They are saved. If they die, they are going to heaven. But they may never be able to walk in the victory of the kingdom because they do not understand the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting me? Now, there are certain unbelievers who have denied the person of Jesus Christ. But whether they agree or not, they are embracing the principles of the kingdom. And you see their taming life as if Satan does not exist. Are you getting me? So, this is the mistake we have in our churches. Especially soul winning churches. We just call the people, when I say soul winning, I mean ministries that are inclined 
towards the evangelistic as an office. Are you getting my point now? Every church should be a soul winning church. Now, they get people born again and just leave them at the door of the kingdom. And say, keep growing. They say, so what do we do? And I say, just continue. Are you not seeing us? All stood. That's what happened. Just continue. And the people do not, they, they don't know what to do. They get sick. They get broke. They, they become failures. Nothing works in their life. Eventually, they die miserable deaths. And then that's the end of it. But there is more to the kingdom. When you get born again and the Holy Spirit comes into your life. He doesn't come to make you a Pentecostal. He comes to begin to initiate you to the revelation, the mindset, the principles, the ideologies of the kingdom. So that when you comprehend, when you understand, and you can apply the principles of the kingdom, then you begin to see things work as the Bible says should work. And this is why we are here tonight. Are you getting my point? So, you may know Jesus Christ, you may have a personal relationship, but to what degree do you understand the principles of the kingdom? It is a combination of these two that we call spiritual growth. Are you getting my point? Spiritual growth is first the degree to which you have conformed experientially to the image and the character of God. And the, Im the degree to which you now understand the structure of the kingdom. The Bible says, with all thy getting, Get understanding. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are exploring the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Commanding victory. Let me now just talk briefly on discerning the, the presence of spirits. Please listen. What I'm sharing is very powerful. I want you to listen. Many people have called innocent people witches. Some of us have called our mothers. You just look at your mother because there's a mark on her face like this. Say, you are a witch. No way. You are a witch. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You just see somebody who doesn't smile. Even when others are smiling, the guy is like, they are like that. His face is, what do you want him to do about it? It doesn't mean he's angry. Just say, ah, now wow. You don't celebrate people's victory. You, you must be a witch. How do you... Wait, listen. This is very important. How do you discern? Oh, there are many things in my head to share. I've shared some, but I'm just putting them again. Let me just, let me just talk a bit about it. I feel the need. It's your desire that is pushing my spirit. See, there are different levels of the influence of Satan in the lives of people. I've taught that, but let me say it again. For those of us who do not understand, possession is only the highest of the dimensions, but there are others. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point now? The first dimension of the oppression of Satan in the lives of people is called deception. 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 What is deception? Causing you to believe a lie. Causing you to err without knowing. The Bible says, ye err not knowing the scripture. Hallelujah. Deception. Second is manipulation and control. Paul, look at me. Apostle Paul. Let me even put the apostle behind his name so that you know the person I'm talking about. Paul, who was a great apostle, began to communicate a lamentation in Romans chapter 7. He said, with my spirit, I serve the Lord. But in my body, I see another law walking in my members. Have you read that? So that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing it. And the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing it. He said, oh wretched man that I am. This is Paul speaking. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? He was communicating a lamentation. Elijah was a very angry man. You get that? It wasn't just because he called fire. Elijah was a temperous person theologically. You do anything, you will burn for it at once. There is no second chance, no consideration, no negotiation. You are going to pay the price for it. It was that same spirit that the disciples had. So when Jesus was walking with them, they said, Ah, you mean these people are speaking? You don't know that this is our MOG. Let's command fire. And Jesus said, Don't you know the spirit that you are of? So that a man is born again does not mean he cannot be influenced by demons. Are you getting my point? Please, if you understand this, your deliverance will start at once. 
I remember arguing with a lady who argued with me. I, I believe she came from... We thank God for what God is doing around the body of Christ and we celebrate the efforts of every man of God. We truly, truly do. But let me tell you something. This lady was... I, as soon as she entered for counseling, I saw a demon looking at me. I said, sister, you need help. Before I said anything, this lady started arguing. No, no, no. no. I'm this in Christ. I said, I know. I know. I'm not arguing. Can I help? Ah, no. I am this and that. Before you say Jack Robinson, she was hitting my fridge, scattering everywhere. In the end of it, I said, all right, you are free. May the Lord bless you. For almost three days, this lady was sending me text messages. What happened? What happened? This is not to make you mock men of God. Archbishop Idahosa said, you only criticize people if you can do two times what they have done once. So this is not an issue of criticism. This is an issue of rising higher. Are you getting the point? We will not criticize them, but we will not do any loyalty or solidarity to remain in that realm. We must rise higher. Even in heaven, he said, come up here. There is still a higher realm. Praise the Lord. Goodness. Will we cover this thing today? So it is possible to see that someone may be born again, but he's still influenced with demons. When somebody carries birth to us, a brother, finish singing on, on Friday. On, after you finish singing, then you now carry bottle and break it. Are you getting my point? And say, we'll do it today. I don't care what it is. Go and tell apostle, we'll do it. Let's tear ourselves into pieces. Listen, 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 please. Uh, as you're laughing, I appreciate the laughter, but I want you to really understand. I'm trying to communicate something very seriously. It's not normal. It's not normal. Please get this. Because, do you know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Do you believe the Bible? You believe the Bible. If you see an anomaly, it should tell you, at every given time, every man is under the influence of some spirits. Either the Spirit of God, or another strange spirit. And every man manifests the Spirit that is influencing him, to the degree he has allowed to influence him. So it is possible for Cain and Abel to coexist in the same body. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to be at work in you to the degree to which you have permitted him. And another strange spirit will be working. Because it is not in the character of the spirit to usurp authority over a man. Demons do that. Are you getting my point? Please, do, do, are, are you getting me? Because I've seen a lot of people during miracle service, you are just standing singing. Praise Adonai. The next thing you just fall down. And at the end, you are embarrassed. You are the pastor of your church. I said it the other time. People say, ah, pastor, what happened? And the person is now embarrassed. Saying, forget. This guy, the way I looked at that man preaching, Kai, that thing he's using is not of God. <laughs> My mother is alive. Go and ask her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Three things biblically characterize the presence of demonic spirits in the lives of people. There are many things, but three things from the Bible. Number one, uncontrolled fear. Please write it. Very important. Many of you trivialize fear. I'm not talking of fear. If you take a little, I saw one of our little babies here. If you take that lady and off the light, she will cry. That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fear that brings bondage. That is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear. God has not given us the spirit of. So fear is not just a phenomenon. It's the presence of a spirit. Every spirit reveals its atmosphere when it manifests. That's why when the spirit of Christ shows up in a place and there is no love, it was something else. You get my point? If at the end of this teaching, I leave you fearful, I used another spirit to speak to you. It doesn't matter whether I preach from the Bible or not. Every spirit should reveal the atmosphere and there is an atmosphere that characterizes this, the presence of God. Righteousness, it must be done according to kingdom principles. Peace, the word peace there is shalom and joy. You don't get joy, it's not the same thing as happiness. It's the Holy Spirit that gives men joy. 
Hallelujah. That's why you only rejoice in the Lord. Not in money. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice because you have the ability. Hallelujah. Fear. Everybody say fear. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse fear from my life. Let me explain what fear means to you. There are many of our family members that are afraid of taking steps. Afraid of getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Afraid of doing a lot of things. That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? The fear that stops you from tithing. Kai! God, you save 5,000, 500. How much is left? That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know that fear is more dangerous. Listen. One spirit of fear can keep a congregation like this in the same level for decades. Fear. Fear that stops you from taking the steps that will bring the blessings of the Lord. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear to break out of your comfort zone. Fear to take giant kingdom steps. That one is a spirit. God has not given us that kind of spirit. But of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number two, disobedience. Listen, look at me. Uncontrolled, helpless disobedience in the life of a man is a classic Bible proof that you need help. What is disobedience? The inability to comply. The inability to take advantage of the grace of God and comply with the instructions and the terms of the spirit. The terms of the kingdom. That, that inability... It's not just about refusing. Many people who disobey do not want to. Is that true? They don't want to. Go and meet somebody who smokes. When he has finished everything and just sits down, you say, ah, John, why now? Say, oh boy, me too, I've, I've tried. Disobedience is a spirit. I'm going to show you from scripture. Ephesians 2 verse 2. How many disobedient believers do we have? Ephesians 2 verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. In, in which in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that walks in who? The sons of disobedience. When people walk in disobedience, perpetually, the extension of disobedience is what we call rebellion, stubbornness. All of these things are extensions of the manifestation of that spirit. So you tell the lady, sit down. Say, me, I must go out today. Have you seen people who all they want to know is the rule that has been set so that they will break it? They are like that. They just want to know, what did they say we should not do? They say, don't talk to these people. Say, today, even if it's this fence. You see them around secondary schools. They just put a rule. They say from today, no jumping this fence. The guys who start looking at the person, they know will break the rule. And you'll be laughing. He will put himself under pressure to disobey. It's a spirit. It's a spirit for God's sake. There are people whose head is as strong. You are talking to them. They are listening to you like this. Already they have disobeyed you before you finish talking. Will you do this? Yes. Will you sit down? Yes. As soon as you leave, they are doing some. It's a spirit. Many, please parents, listen. If you are a parent here, listen to me. This is the mystery behind the rebellion of many of our children. The protocol will bear me witness. Last week, a woman was tired of her child. I'm sure maybe she's here with the boy. Tired of her son and just carried the boy and said, let's go for counseling. When they entered, the woman sat down. She didn't waste time. No beating around the bush. This is the boy I brought. You know, look, when mothers get tired, fathers are logical. They won't take steps first. They want to look. How is my reputation going to be affected? Mothers say, let's go. When they sat down, it was in, in less than five minutes, this boy was free, but he was a spirit. Hallelujah. Please, are you getting this now? This is not supposed to make you hate people. 
it is the biblical revelation that can help you to love people. See, agape functions from the standpoint of a revelation. You must know something higher than somebody's stupidity to love him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not this teaching about agape. They just say, just love. No, you can't just love. If you are stealing my thing, why should I love you? Until I have a higher revelation that is greater than your act. So it gives me the impetus to love even when you do not deserve. Are you getting my point? So we put pressure on people in church. They say, just love. What is there? Are you the first person they stole your thing? Ah, the person is saying, do you know the pain I'm having? I say, just love. It's like that. It works for everybody. It's not like that. I'm telling you this night. Love is a function of a revelation. That's why the Bible says it has heights. It has depth. It has dimensions. There is a revelation that when you have, you can love even when people do not merit it. And they will look at you and say, ah, ah, come. Why is Steve still loving this person? And you know that you are functioning from a light that is higher than that which people see. It was on account of that that Jesus looked at the people who were killing him and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Look at the other two thieves that were hanging. What did they say? Same cross. What did they say? The other one even turned to Jesus and said, Now, wow, we are here, you are here. On the cross. Still not taking responsibility on the cross. He was on the cross. He stole. They caught two of them. They said, This night we are going to crucify two of you. Agreed, agreed. Now they are on the cross and he's blaming Jesus. Praise God disobedience. Everybody lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus the workings of disobedience lives my life from today. See you do not know how powerful the word of God is until your obedience is complete. Are you getting me? Our disobedience is what makes it look like God is not able to help us. Please believe what I'm saying. Number three, classic manifestation of the presence of spirits. Anger or what we call rage. Rage. Let's talk about this one moment. Anger. Everybody say anger. Please look at me. When you see someone or you have uncontrolled anger, there are people who can kill you when they are angry. Then later on say, ah, have you seen people like that? Some of our fathers especially. And I'll tell you why this anger thing is in our fathers. Because, you see, the beauty of any man's life is to make sure he's able to provide and protect his family. If you cannot provide and protect, you are not a man. doesn't matter how many children you can give birth to. You get the point? The Bible gives us what, it's any man that cannot cater, not any man that cannot give birth to children, whether male or female, that's not the issue. Protection and provision is God's biblical lead most tests to test genuine manhood. You see that? Protection, provision. That's why as a father, he models that. So if your life makes him look irresponsible, he's telling you there is a problem. Because any man that cannot cater for his family, the Bible says, is worse than an infidel. Are, are you getting my point now? So, anger. When you are frustrated by trying all the principles you know to try and it's not bringing the result and there are pressures. Do you know, statistically, some of you who are medical people will agree with me. There are more men with stroke and high blood pressure. Is that true? And blood related diseases. When there is no school fees, when there is no this, the landlord is chasing the family and all of that away and running, everybody is running. The children look at the mother because they are usually closer to the mother. The mother now looks like the father. The father is angry because he can't look at anybody now. So he looks back at them in a way that will force them to shift their face. Oh yeah, hey, what Are you not seeing what we are doing? Frustration. That's why it's better to listen to this thing before you get married. Believe me. It's a big advantage. Big advantage. Are you following what I'm saying now? Many of us just find out, oh, I'm old. Kai, time is going. I must marry. I give myself two months. God, if you are faithful, God is saying, calm down. Just listen to this series they are teaching you. God, I'm... 
See, Bishop is enjoying his marriage through, through knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anger. Anger. Many people have refused to be promoted regardless of their fasting and prayer because of anger. Many relationships have scattered because of anger. One day the guy just looks at the lady, removes his belt, beats the living daylight out of her. And later on said, I just wanted to, to know that I was not myself. The lady said, that's the sign that I don't have any business. Who was there? I need to know the other person. You were not yourself? That means you cannot be yourself another day. I'm not doing. You see that? Or the lady sees the guy speaking and say, Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Maybe it's his younger sister. You just carry her seat. Turn your hand and say, I will lose and you will lose. These are spirits. Let me tell you how you know it's a spirit. At the end of it, the person regrets it. And sometimes the people are even shocked. They cannot believe that they are the ones who did what they did. Hallelujah. I remember one guy years ago, the mom cursed him and she told him something. She said, you will stop stealing the day rat. Stop stealing. <laughs> true story. True story. If it's just a story I'm forming, I will tell you. Bring that guy out of the prison. In two weeks, he's going back. <laughs> they were used to him. When he comes, they say, pass, just go. There. Nobody's asking any question. Because there was a spirit. Get the gravity of disobedience. Disobedience is not just refusing to comply to instruction. There is something that forces you to violate your own values. It's called the spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. That's what can make a man of God collect bribe. They are forming a crusade and you say, ah, this, let's give bribe. And the person forgets he's a man of God. That's what can pressure somebody to do malpractice. After praying in tongues, he said, Hi, this thing is too hot, too hot. Let me just, whoever can help me, I will talk to God later on. You see, it's the workings of, please get this very seriously. I used to trivialize disobedience till the day God opened my eyes. Because I will soon teach us that you are only ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Anger. How many of us have been suffering from anger? Anger, deep rage, anger. I remember a man who beat his son, beat his son to an extent that wires entered the boy's body. Stripped the boy naked, oh, tied him, and was just allowing these demons to vent anger. And you know, at such times, the mother cannot come. She wants to talk. She said, I will join you and this boy and tie two of you together. And show you I prayed your dowry in full. You see all these kind of statements. Say, I refuse anger. See, if this is all you need to get to finish the year, it's enough. Are you getting me? Anger. Many of us, especially ladies. Anger. Anger. You get angry at everything. Oh, it's pissing me off. Is this, this off. We have all kinds of satanic dictions that we have brought to explain this predicament. I'm telling you now, it's a spirit. Stop. You cannot be fighting with 20 people. The problem is you. If you don't humble yourself, why is it that everyone that comes around my life, we must fight? Something is wrong. Take responsibility tonight. And when it's time to pray, pray seriously. And say, enough is enough. Anger has cheated many of us. We have lost relationships. We have lost opportunities. There are many men of God that would have experienced increased thief. There are some people I would never invite to this pulpit, even if their ministry is raising the dead. Because they would transfer all kinds of wrong spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many, you see a beautiful brought a sister, lovely lady, virtuous lady, but anger. Do you know what the Bible has to say about anger? It says it's better, how did he put it in the book of Proverbs? It's better to, to sleep. How many of you have tried sleeping on a roof? I've slept on speaker and amplifier, but I've not slept on a roof. To sleep on a roof than to stay with a woman who is full of rage. 
It's a terrible thing. Look at what the Bible used to compare that kind of spirit. Hallelujah. I know a woman, I was told that, I was told, not, not that I know her, I was told the story, that she took a knife and put red hot fire. I tell the truth, God is my witness. And she took that thing and pressed the ears of her child. Say, you are stubborn. I will give you this mark so that forever, but did it change the child? That's what will make the child, when he becomes 13 years, his first assignment is to buy a gun. He will buy one small locally made pistol. This is what the hunters use. One day, when the mother talks, you say, today, one of us will die. And you see, he will kill the mother. And people will not understand the story. They'll say, such a kind woman in church, bar because she was giving. You see, the terrible thing about anger is that it does not show itself everywhere. So some people will never agree that this person is suffering from. How can you call this our elder? This loving man. When he comes up, they say such a humble man. This guy has such a character and then he will kneel down as they are even talking. But this is the man that is killing his wife at home. That's why when you go and meet the pastor and say, pastor, there is trouble. The pastor says a lie. You people are just being lousy. Anger is a spirit. It's a spirit. Are you getting my point? Other spirits, lust and the rest and all of this, they stem from these three things. Fear, disobedience, anger. That's why when you are casting out devils, notice every time they manifest, the first thing is anger. They just get angry. There is no joy with Satan, brothers and sisters. No joy at all. Forget that thing that musicians try to show you that hey, it's a nice thing, hell is this, they drop it's, it's a lie. There is no joy. He cannot have it. Praise the Lord. John 14 verse 30. Let's look at one scripture. Are you getting blessed tonight? This, this teaching is a self-examination. Many of us, you are seeing that this is, the solu this is the problem. God is already showing you that this is it. Look at me. There is no man who has the spirit of love that will not have friends around him. Please, ladies, listen to me. When you find out, see, this is, this is what is responsible for many things. I know there are other factors, but there are, the Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. And this, this thing is a strategy. It drives your destiny helpers away from you. I'm not just talking about relationship marriage. No, destiny helpers. This spirit of anger, this spirit of fear, this disobedience has cheated a lot of us. We have carried over seasons that should be seasons of breakthrough and liberty. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 30. Hallelujah. Now this is a big key. We are talking about the laws of the spirit now. Everybody say the laws of the spirit. Or say the laws of victory. Let me call them the laws of victory. We are talking of commanding victory. This is a law in the spirit. It says, I will no longer talk much with you. Can I have it in Amplified? Is it possible? Amplified. I will not talk with you much. For the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of the world is coming. And he has no what? Claim. Aha. That means for everyone Satan afflicts. He claims. There is a claim. Are you getting what Jesus is saying? This is Jesus speaking now. He said, and he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Therefore, he has no power. This is a big key. Please, I want to show you laws of victory right now. That means every time Satan looks at you, he's finding something that looks at, like him in you. And if he finds it, it gives him access. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When, when demons oppress people, it's not to say the word of the Lord is not powerful. There must be something. And we're going to explore this. Say after me, the loss of victory. There must be something. And is that something we want to... There are three things. Three things that give Satan access, legal access over people. Number one, covenants. Please write it. Covenants. Are you getting blessed tonight? 
See, many of you, as you are hearing what I'm saying, I tell you, you will just be getting free at once. Because when you hear the word, the word is sent. It can heal and it can deliver. Say after me, covenant. Now, the word covenant is very important. Just leave that verse. Covenant is a very important word. I know we have bastardized it in the body of Christ. We just shout covenant, covenant. Let me tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. What did I call it? An agreement. A pact, a contract. Huh? Between two or more people. Based on clearly defined terms. A covenant, an agreement between two or more people. Whether one is higher than the other, that's not the issue. Are you getting me? Based on what? Clearly defined terms. Notice my definition. An agreement between two or more people. You can't enter a covenant with yourself. Clearly defined terms with grave consequences when there is any violation. This is a standard definition. Notice the word agreement. Notice the word, what? Clearly defined terms. Notice the word consequences when it is violated. If you understand this, you will see the reason. Please look at me. While certain geographical territories in Nigeria still have certain strongholds. Everybody says strongholds. There are places in this country that the men are generally irresponsible. Geographically speaking, true or false. You may have been exempted by light, but it does not stop the fact that that's... Are you getting me? Where I come from, the people drink. They drink a lot. Are you getting me? I know... Remember one time we went for crusade that they told us we went for crusade in a certain place and they say when they give birth to the baby, they dip alcohol and just touch it in his mouth small. And the guy gets up a drunkard all his life. He can go to Harvard and return back to Nigeria as a drunkard. Listen, I want you to understand covenants. So, watch this. Our forefathers, because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa, I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place, your people eat people as if you are innocent. Everybody's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. Say you are coming from this state. You are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You're, no, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? Only idols. And when God called him, Jake, all of the people, the, as from Abraham, that was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah. Are you getting me now? He revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh. Praise God. Now, what does that mean? That tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born. You were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know 
that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan, Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of, he showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city. People will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? You see a man moving. Nobody's protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually annually. People go and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not the whole idea is a, what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We're talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now, down the line, many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know, they did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel, but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord, but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere. The man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101, 114, no glasses. Ha ha, I remember you. He said, die now, die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive, I'm watching. Listen. You keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen. The reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? Transgenerational allegiance. Where one generation will now say, we are the young people now, we are bowing to you. And you buy into that generation. So, before a child is giving birth to, they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits. You, you just get up and come and meet somebody. I like this girl. Oh. Pray, you won't pray. Be born again, you won't be born again. You just come. The day you say, I like her in the night, you just see somebody, you say, be careful. The day you ever come near that lady, She's my wife or she's this. And you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, oh God, I won't do it again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night, except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know, the church is a place of, we, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we're addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. 
this is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, 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 like shops. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation, but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Tonight it will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. It will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing to break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Satan comes to find expression there must be something that he can hold on to number one is a covenant hear me listen a possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted were you there when Jesus died did you see him on the cross and even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross you didn't see him but by covenant he brought you into it and is as real as standing there to an extent that Paul can say I have been crucified don't lie to us Paul where were you this is the power of a covenant footballers score and they say we scored were you there you understand covenant so here says how the Bible puts it as for me and my house we will serve the Lord that means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. We salute them, but there's got to be more. This is Africa. A nation that God, a continent that God desires. The whole eyes of hell is upon Africa. They know, they know that Savior shall arise. This is the mountain. 
That's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest. I will show you, listen, I'm going to show you certain revelations and you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically no matter how you try because they were not sicknesses in the first place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody getting angry tonight? So Satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life. Say covenant. Some of our parents, let's be honest, even went to an extent of inviting one Baba. Tell the truth. Is that true? Some of you were small. You just saw somebody just come. They say, please give him a seat. Say, all right, everybody come. The next thing you saw something boiling, no fire. Ah. Who are you? Say, just sit down. Turn your back or remove your clothes. This one for husband. This one for prosperity. This one for that. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, I want to, I can kneel down and beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that because you just said, I give my life to Jesus Christ, everything went. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you getting me? And I'm going to explain to you, that does not mean the Bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in Christ. I've taught you the structure of God's way of communicating. He speaks as though you have reached the end. It's not his fault. It's the way his nature is. He does not speak as if he's bounded by time. When he looked at Gideon, he said, Oh mighty man of value, how long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience? I'm not denying that the word of God says this about you, but brothers and sisters, it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths. Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that. What is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you. It's a cry from altars. A man marries a wife. One day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him. Everything irritates him. They go to counselors and they say, are you looking hot? You too, help yourself now. She says, okay, oh, go and buy the clothes. The day she's wearing, the man looks as if he didn't see anything. <laughs> you did this for me, don't be stupid. Because these things are spiritual things. Some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain brothers and sisters when the bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom your question should be which kingdom there are kingdoms there are thrones there are dominions they still speak are you getting what i'm saying do you know why they are speaking you have violated the terms of that covenant because according to the covenant the fraternity continues now based on the knowledge of the gospel all right that you have had. You are now saying, I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you, we are not going to any village. We are not doing anything again. These altars, as far as they are concerned, they have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying, Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say, okay, we'll see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them so that you will return. You see it? That's why when things get bad, they say, this one that this leg is swelling up, you, where did you go? Sir? You see, I was sitting down they say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? You went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you kneel down and say, Kai, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? 
And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your color that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She say, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. <laughs> the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but the covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seem to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song? I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. Come on now. Enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. What happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you enter different kinds of covenant. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person. But I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it. Say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. That Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is, we got involved in all kinds of things. And then when we got born again, we just said, okay, everything is over. This is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something. Are you following me now? Or a pastor. Or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking and he just comes and he says he's born again. When the guy says he's born again, he's standing and he's preaching and one day that altar strikes. Bam! And the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what? This is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. Covenants. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. 
I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. He say, the day, hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So person say, why? And they're not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there, after a while you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you sit? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling. Say, man of God. I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon say, let's go. <laughs> because it's not by grammar through the greatness of thy power not your vocal composition through the greatness of your power you are going home listen god is sending many of us as saviors you are going back angry every time god wants to liberate a home a family he seeks for a man an agent an ambassador i know that there are some of you who are already doing it this thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air in your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free, for he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that's okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self imposed. Why self imposed? Don't touch this. Yeah, I must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Amen. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. Are you getting me? 
So I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship, conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implications. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? And what communion Two words, same words, koinonia. What communion has light got to do with darkness? It says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me. Many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations. And you say it does not matter. You have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them. Are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things and still be yourself. Because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind, you have a brain, it has memories, it can replay, it can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back and you are wondering why every time you see every lady, you are feeling like sleeping with them. Something is wrong. And you come for koinonia like this, the water of the world washes you. And you get up and go back. There are many of us, we, we entered wrong relationships because of our friends. They came together and said, you serve. Don't fall our hand. This guy has been disturbing us. Let me tell you, straight to the point. If you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, yo, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room and he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air. Now I beg. And you are laughing. I say, guy, you serve now. Wow, 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 wow. Come back after one hour. You see that? Associations. Creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet. True or false? You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon, Go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. Some of, some families, even as, see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. 
They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so-called prophet. And they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names. I-40, you say, I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say, when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says, do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices is the word stratomai his methodology in the name of association many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online i'm a member i'm a this i'm a that they send you one envelope something they say okay put the anchor chief here many of us is associations that have made us go and collect all kinds of things love portion i hear they do it in zaria city when you rub it it will make the, the guy, what if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, he will tell you the bill and you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this to make this guy, ladies, hear me. Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you come, me too, I must be, before 28, nothing is wrong with that. Except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an arm robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. They don't rob 10,000, uh -uh, 10 million. 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is seen. There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. Mysterious livings. Your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. 
You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? He said, go out, go out. Lock the door. <laughs> this man is sweating for hours. Why? He said he must walk. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because, Steve, right now, people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year, I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong, it's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, you, how did you do it now? Now, how, this one that you to an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely to get the true prosperity, the seasons of proving is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut and that's Satan's ministry to give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. My spirit is fired up as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot. The, the, the barrier between you and the things you want to take. Is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just. It means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind the strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind the strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the, mis, the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew. Please let's look at it quickly. Matthew 16 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So before we talk about binding and losing. What do we talk about first? Keys. Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation, knowledge. Hallelujah. Very important. These keys are the keys of knowledge. I will give you the principles. This is what I'm sharing with you. Principles. When you know these things, you can keep Satan where he belongs. As a ministry, we know some principles. And our success is not, in, is not magic. You can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. 
because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again, revelation. This is what we lack, revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed. You are neglecting the law of honor. Which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors closed towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? honor and they will bless you. So he told his song, he said, go and bring me venison so that I will be pleased and I will bless you. Are you getting my point? Another principle. The principle of open heaven is tithing. It's in your Bible. Tithing is not the key for money. I've said this thing again and again. Tithing is not the law for money. Tithing does more than money. Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because you are now, if you give under a closed heaven, you are wasting your time. Are you getting me? There are many faithful givers who are not tithers. God is not just after money. God is after a pattern. He told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Open heavens. As a ministry, by the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira in tithe. We have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story. How that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, I remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning to go and ease myself and the Lord told me immediately you are going without question, without arguing many of us see delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure he said Abraham rose up early in the morning and when I rose up I went there I went to go and sow my seed honor gives access and when that happens I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport let me return and the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the city is open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant, anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word. But let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away. And they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power? Prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting 
I know we say it solves many problems. But from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit and helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God in a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles. Many principles. Many. There are many more. Praise is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of God. You know what? This praise that many people trivialize. Is it just dancing? That? No. Praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare. Read your Bible. It was at the shout, the healer. All the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho. They didn't just fall down. They sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must. is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it. The finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now, a lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh -uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil says, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above. Say, he has given me a name. I am a partaker of his anointing, of his spirit, of his authority. He said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And he said, as the father sent me with the same equipping, so send I you. I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. When Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize. Please realize. 
that God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement. But I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence. They just came out from Egypt. And he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them again. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I I am seeking your face and touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, O oh God, in your presence, O oh God. Many of us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See, even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. You must first experience the liberty of the spirit. This is a very serious moment. Hallelujah. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance. Please rise up on your feet. Give this moment every seriousness. Give this moment every seriousness. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Please sing this song from the depth of your heart. I won't go back. Say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came to the way it used to be before your presence. One more time. I will go back. I will go back. Can go back to the way it used to be before your presence. One more time. I will go back. I will go back. Can go back to the way it used to be before your presence. Hallelujah. Tonight's deliverance will be in this order. Number one, we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalists, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalists, go ahead. Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. So go to Pekete. Pray on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your loved ones. There's victory here tonight at a platter of gold. Enough is enough. Shackles of poverty, shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory is here at last. Here at last. In this last teaching service of the year, 
Say Lord, I'm tired. Rota papa kata prekete de baba baba. Rekete lekete prakata baba baba baba. Rekata prakata baba baba. Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. Take a poco to Pacama. Be that agent of change tonight. Rekete tete kete prega de balara rara ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told the Lord. I said, Lord. I don't just want to teach this enough is enough enough is enough hear me brothers and sisters this is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families this is the explanation there is a devil out there and tonight if you will only stand you will be that savior please tonight if it's for the sake of your loved ones Say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. Many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you, but like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. Oh, I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for a job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil live and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see, Look up. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. Is on our families and is on everybody went to school but they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university let me tell you let me tell you brothers and sisters if this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty this is pre-miracle service are you getting me i'm just doing my job to help you here tonight but brothers i want you to pray are you listening to me in the next five minutes you are going to mention those limitations in your family and say, Lord, tonight, this night, right now, lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. 
Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be opened. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray. Pray, pray. Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray for your finances. Pray. Please pray. Mothers, pray. Fathers, pray. Pray. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. Let go to break it. A great to shake it. Rekete. A pokoto prokoto. A great telebosh. It shall come to pass. The body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles. Break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant or every ordinance, Lord, that is speaking over my life, whether I know it or not, every covenant that has come tonight, I confront it willingly, consciously. Lift your voice. I break it. Every covenant, every spell, every enchantment. Pray. A brocotto brecate, le brocotto prosa, a brocotto brecate, every covenant. Oh God, Jesus died already. I break it from my life. Shekete Rocotto brecate, I break it, oh God. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord... Wherever I have given the devil legal access, let the blood speak. Are you getting me? Whether it's my mistake, whether it's my carelessness, let the blood speak. Pray. Let the blood speak. The blood can speak above every other blood. There's blood speaking in your village, but there is the blood of the son of the living God 
it has a voice it speaks mercy it speaks freedom it speaks liberty let the blood speak I plead the blood over my failures I plead the blood over my mistakes pray I plead the blood over my carelessness pray whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family let the blood speak Let the blood speak higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan cometh unto me. And does not find anything of himself let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that Satan cannot resist Hallelujah. 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 I'm ready to pray for you. See, some of you will be shocked tonight. Be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, de, for deliverance and the rest. Many of you will be surprised tonight. We have few minutes, but we want it to be thorough. This one is not for your family. This one is for yourself. If you don't believe it, no problem. We are not offended. But for those who know that tonight must be this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to pray. I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray. Brothers and sisters, there are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking. Some of us, you know what I'm saying. But tonight, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. This is what I hear in my spirit. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drummer, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See Tonight is going to be a ministration of fire. Many of you don't even know what fire. Fire is not just for falling down. Hear me. Fire is a mystery. It's the manifestation of the spirit that separates, that prunes, that delivers. I'm going to pray. Don't, don't worry about how many times you have fallen. Tonight, it will happen for real. 
because you have prayed it and because you are tired and because God has commanded it lift your hands please hallelujah at the count of three I'd like you to shout the name Jesus once that happens Steve play everybody play hallelujah Shakata Balaraba. It's fire tonight. It will catch some of you. It will burn that chaff. Many of you will hear stories. Hear me? We don't kill people. But I tell you, some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I don't care what needs to be happened. What needs to happen tonight? The door of your destiny must open. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, because of your anointing. Let it break yokes. Let curses and yokes be broken at the count of three. Are you ready now? Please shout it from the depth of your heart. One, two, three. Out, out. Right now, I set altars on fire. I set altars fire. Fire, fire, fire. Let the fire consume every altar. Let the fire consume every spell, every enchantment. Bring them out. Bring them out. I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment. Judgment, judgment. Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life. Hey, koto to teka, reke te 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 baka, mareko to so bariata. I hear the chains falling. Hey. The chains falling. Yeah. Lord, we hear the chains falling. Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tied. No, just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, get ready now. Three, receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Be released now. 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 I command judgment. Whoever has tied you and tied your destiny this night, I release the fire of judgment upon them. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. 
we just have a few minutes but lift your hands God is delivering people from anger hear me anger this thing called anger when I pray for you you will know it's a spirit and it's not normal hallelujah anger anger many ladies will be involved in this hallelujah at the count of three all I want you to shout is the name Jesus follow me drama hallelujah anger is a spirit is a wicked spirit hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three my God anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger at the count of three it will leave them forever are you ready now one two three Go, 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 every spirit, go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out, come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. goes from your life hallelujah lift your hands quickly we want to pray against the spirit of fear many of you cannot take bold steps you are afraid of everything you are afraid of failure you are afraid of success you are afraid of marriage you are afraid to take steps you are afraid of starting a business what if I fail that spirit must leave you this night lift your hands spirit of fear spirit of fear spirit of fear are you ready now Lord at the count of three as they shout that name Jesus I command fear Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go. 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 I command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. Come on. Now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. Listen, now I'm going to pray against the spirit of disobedience, non-compliance. This spirit must lead you to obey the principles of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe this should concern everybody. You should say, Lord, whatever makes me to find it hard to obey the principles of the kingdom, it must leave. Lift up your hands. Complete, prompt obedience. The Bible says his laws are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Shout this at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. I'm going to count five. At the count of five, I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. That name, Jesus. And Lord, let every spirit that sponsors disobedience, rebellion, and hardness of heart, let it leave your people right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Every spirit of disobedience. Go, 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 go. 
call now. Now, spirit of rebellion, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Spirit of disobedience, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Prophesy over your life. From today, in the name of Jesus, release this lady right now. I see you already in the spirit. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Out. Out right now. On your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out. Out of her. On your mark, get set. Out you go. Look, don't waste our time. Go, go. Please, no manifestation. Go out now. Now. I forbid every useless manifestation. We're out of time. Just go. Now, leave her. Leave her. Look at me, Osha. Walk with me. I said, leave her. Go. See, do you know why I say you should leave her? I'm, I'm, I'm flowing under a heavy unction. Just leave her. Let's continue what we're doing. Hallelujah. Prophecy does not reveal, it creates. Have you not left her? Where did she go to? On your knees and out of her. Now. On your knees and out. Quickly, don't waste our time. I gave an instruction on your knees and out. Many of you think it's out. That's how some of you get deceived. You say, thank you, Jesus. On your knees and out. Please listen. I pray right now. to speak over your life right now in the name that is above all names every voice right now that is contrary to Christ in your life right now let it be silenced forever in the name of Jesus let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every altar that speaks against you, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Whoever is responsible for the predicaments in your life, I judge them this night. Every spirit that is responsible for poverty and failure, in the mighty name of Jesus, be free from it now. 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 Any other thing that ties you down, whatsoever it is, both for yourself and your family members, 
be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. In place of that curse, I put a blessing upon your life. Blessed beyond the curse. Blessed beyond any covenant. I bless you. Many of you don't know what I'm doing. Just receive. I put a blessing on your life. I put a blessing on your life. Let it create a garden of Eden. Everywhere you go, I turn things around for your favor. I release favor. I release blessings. You are free. You are free. I declare you free. Therefore, whatever has not been working in your life, I command it to begin to work now. I command it to begin to work now. Whatever should have come into your life and is still pending, whether your life partner, whether your job, I pray that from now to next miracles, this miracle service, within these seven days, may God do something that will surprise you. I said, may my God do something that will surprise you. The miracle is for the believer. The miracle is for the believer. Lord, in seven days, change the stories of men. In seven days, transform people in a dramatic way. May they return on Friday with fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making any long discussion. I'm going to invite you to come. Please listen. This is a very solemn moment. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, and you know that you, meet, you need to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are, whether inside or outside. Your salvation is the number one. Hello, step. beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.